Welcome to the Fireside Chat as part of the Fox Hollow. My name is Skylar. My name is Keelan. And today we are talking about happiness. Happiness. So here's one of the greatest paradoxes of our time. We live in one of the wealthiest countries in the world, the United States, and yet we live day by day unhappy, unfulfilled, and progressively more anxious. Over the next five weeks, we will climb the happiness ladder together and avoid the pit of discontentment. Ooh. The happiness ladder has these five rungs. Stuff, experience, self-improvement, connection, and finally, mindfulness or gratitude. Today, we'll start with the first rung of the ladder. Stuff. Why stuff can be good or bad for us and how we can improve our lives with stuff or how we can get beyond stuff to be happy so as we were joking about we can talk about stuff oh yeah we've had a lot of bad experiences and some good experiences but with but we know about stuff yeah we're very experienced (laughs) yeah you could call us professionals stuff connoisseurs experts uh yeah so we grew up in a household that is basically like stuff stuff not everywhere everywhere like the hoarder shows that you know the hoarding that you see on tv well but different but (laughs) in some areas some of the areas are i call it functional to dysfunctional hoarding Mm -hmm. or like it's put into corners in rooms but it's my really anxiety inducing oh yeah so it's very stressful one real quick real quick story talking about the stuff in our own home growing up um i remember at one point in my childhood um i i'm like i had the same room for like many many years and I don't know what happened, but, like, all these toys just, like, piled up in my room and, like, in the center of my mm-hmm. room and, like, scattered throughout some places, too. But, like, mainly in, like, the center and even, like, I don't know, up a wall somewhere. Or something. Like, there was a giant pile of toys that had no organization to it. Yeah. And it was just a pile of stuff in my room. And I was maybe, like seven i don't know Mm -hmm. like i was young enough that like you couldn't rely on me to organize all this stuff for myself because i'm like seven teach you how to organize but then also like you know i if, if it had an organizational system i was old enough that i could follow that and like i could pick up my own room but when you when it was like that bad it's like a seven-year-old doesn't know where to start (laughs) right (laughs) with like a giant pile (laughs) of toys that mountain yeah in your room because we're i'm six years older than you so So i was my room looked like an episode of hoarders but like children's toys well yeah it was it was hoarders because like you couldn't walk around in there like there was like one path that you could walk to like get to my bed yeah and that was it yeah otherwise it was like stumbling through toys and, and it, not quite as, like they weren't legos but like you didn't want to step on them no. like these are like plastic toys and yeah would, i mean like there were some stuffed animals obviously they did about too, injure the bottoms of your feet yeah <laughs> it was or, dangerous like, break the toys oh yeah <laughs> yeah and so which isn't like good either like because I'm sure I couldn't find any toys to play with either. It's like I have to dig through a mountain of toys to find the one that I want to play with. But um, yeah, just thought I'd throw that one in there because you're like, it wasn't like a hoarder, but sometimes yeah. it was. No, yeah. <laughs> because of that particular, like the rest of the house wasn't terrible, but my room was a disaster zone. Um, I'm sure the kitchen was probably clean. And- I was that much better. I always struggled cleaning it. Our rooms and, and keeping them organized. Just and because of how much stuff up. we had. Your room. We never had garage sales. We no. never like really got rid of things because our parents never got rid of anything. No, and they so didn't they, want to. So when we were younger, like we didn't have any lead on that. But that was like our first like 
learning experience with stuff and it was just a really unhealthy relationship with stuff like just accumulating it and never letting it go yeah never saying I goodbye. remember like there were like baby toys and like teethers mm-hmm. that we had for the longest time I think I finally threw them away at some point while I was going through stuff but it's like they were around for so long like probably 10 years after I needed teethers you know which is ridiculous you don't need right them around anymore so with an unhealthy relationship to stuff and I, I i see a common theme and like anybody can get attached to stuff like there's usually something going on there but the most common theme that i see when people get attached to stuff is that they were low income yeah at some point in their lives and and usually were like with our parents they were extremely low income when they were younger, when I was a baby, and worked their way up to middle class when they finally had enough money so, like, they could replace things and, you know, but because they were in, like, they still had, like, a hustle mentality where they're like, oh, but we might need this one day and I don't want to let this go because I don't want to have to buy it again because there's that whole mentality of frugality that is, like, taken too far to, like, an obsessive point where you just can't let go of anything because you might. quote unquote yeah might need it someday yeah. which is a death trap but it doesn't make people happy like at first glance you're like oh maybe they're happy because they have these items that they may need someday they're prepared but, yeah they're prepared but what really happens is like you're just even more anxious and of course you never use those items so they're just like taking up your space and like we talked about in our minimalism episode when you have clutter that's taking up your space it causes anxiety and it's um taking away value from other important items in your space and it's not functional it's it's just basically all of bad feels around those things so you can't really rely on stuff to bring you happiness and of course this isn't This isn't news. Everybody knows that, like, oh, stuff can't buy you happiness. You can't just go to the store and, like, fill the emptiness inside of you. But people try. Mm -hmm. People do. They do try. Um, Well, I mean, like, and in a way, yeah, it doesn't necessarily fill that space. But, like, the time, like, if you go out and mm -hmm. buy the thing at that point in time... It yeah, brings you happiness. You get a burst of, and like, then yeah. in, like, a week or two or, like, even, like, a month, mm-hmm. it's not, it's gone. Your happiness is gone because it's just a thing. Right. Yeah. Especially so junk items. It can bring you, it can bring you temporary happiness, but then it goes away and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, I'd say that's the case. Whereas, like, you know, I was commenting um, in a previous podcast episode and on that um, office cleaning vlog that, like, you know, Daniel and I have a lot of books and movies and stuff, but, like, the difference between, and I, we don't, I have not bought another book or movie in, like, a really long time or CD. Yeah. Like, these are just things that I had for a while. Um And do need to still go through some of them and and get rid of some that I don't watch or... Don't bring you happiness. Right. Or, like, spark joy or whatever. But, like, the difference between a DVD and, like, maybe there's one day that we can just digitize everything, but, like, um, and not have to have the physical copy. But the difference is, like, okay, with Kiki's delivery service, I watch it every time I get sick. Mm-hmm. And each time I watch it, it sparks joy. It brings me joy. Yeah. So the difference between that and, like, a knickknack? I don't know. You know, like, something that is not gonna... That's just gonna sit on a shelf and... Right. You're not gonna engage with it. It's not gonna bring you happiness again and again and again. And there might be a couple little things or that you might pick up somewhere that bring you a bunch of of joy and that you enjoy looking at but if you're just like collecting a bunch of random things that don't really 
make you happy. They're mm-hmm. just there to fill a place on a shelf. Then it's not really yeah. necessary. Yeah. Right. Like my decorations, I take a lot of care into decorations. Yeah. And like picking what you want. And then not holding on to, like, if you get tired of a decoration, not holding on to it. Right. Past the point of, oh, I don't like this anymore. This isn't my style anymore. Then Then you can can get rid of it. And if you find something else that you like at the time, then you get that. And maybe in a few years that you grow out of that. It just depends on on what your decorating style is and and everything. So there, there are things that can bring you happiness yeah you don't have to live like a monk lifestyle and like (laughs) no attachment to things although like attachments to things can be a negative but um i i can use a positive example of like my teapot for example yeah i have a really nice japanese tea set and the cool thing about it is like it's functional i've drank a lot of tea out of it yeah (laughs) I used to which, drink like every night out of it. Which is really, it got me through law school. Like it was really nice, um, and it looks beautiful. Oh yeah. So it's both functional and that like I do drink tea out of it. It's it also can last up to like five hundred years or something. So it's like a legacy item that you can pass down through the generations. Mm-hmm. That like you can say, and it was it was pricey. Like it was an <laughs> expensive piece. So it is something that you can like pass down in your will and testament and be like, I want this tea set to go to you know my niece or nephew or grandchild or you know whatever the case may be and it also just it brews really lovely tea and it looks beautiful on the shelf so that is an item a thing that does bring me a lot of happiness i would be very very sad if it was gone for multiple reasons um but yeah so like stuff There are things in our lives that can bring us happiness because of what it represents and the experience that you have around it, like gifts that are very meaningful. Like you're wearing a gift from me right now. Which is very meaningful. Yeah, that I got for you from when I went to Ireland. Yeah. So that's a thing, but you're wearing it, so it does have some kind of functionality, but it's more about the meaning yeah behind it definitely and like that's also the thing i mean a lot of people oh diamonds are a girl's best friend whatever that that whole thing but like a ring (laughs) brings happiness it has a purpose Mm -hmm. but it has it's it's a symbol it symbolizes something it symbolizes love or friendship or whatever you have Loyalty. your ring for my clad ring. yeah <laughs> and so it's not always just about that it looks nice or whatever or like a painting even like it might not be yeah. oh that it just looks nice i mean it might be that but it might have a deeper meaning to you that mm-hmm. it reminds you of something an event or a person that you hold close to your heart so it's it, like you can find happiness in anything. It could be a chair that you just adore that you've yeah yeah that maybe you found out that your daughter was pregnant on or you know like all these memories that like go together with things and it could be hard to like let go of of a sentimental item if it like breaks beyond repair yeah those are really sad yeah then it's it's devastating versus like oh if like a knickknack falls off a shelf it's no big deal um so it's it's a lot of personally i like to surround myself with things that actually mean something to me rather Mm -hmm. than like yeah you know i like a i like a pretty necklace but i definitely prefer wearing the one that my sister gave to me and because it means something, and it's really pretty, but uh, but it, it I also can pick means, out nice gifts. It means something <laughs> to me as well, and um, or like a a shirt that that it doesn't just look cute, but like it has a nice memory or, or yeah. something with well, it. Or that's another thing, because like things are clothing is a thing, 
Yeah. And you kind of need to wear clothes. I don't uh, know. Maybe. I mean, maybe. <laughs> um, but things can also be an expression of who you are. And so it can be about, I think it's strongly about identity. And it should be. Like yeah. things you should identify strongly with. Like your clothing is an expression of who you are. Like what you identify with and how you want to express yourself to other people. Mm-hmm. So... Again, stuff is not inherently bad. It's just when we start to collect things. Idolize it and yeah. collect, yeah, and that's collect when we go that too you don't far. Need right. or really want. Yes. Because of course, like you need your necessities. Mm-hmm. Like a place to sit and a certain amount of clothes that could get you however many days before washing or if you have one set of clothes that you wash every single day go for it all power to you have one outfit but you know you, you typically have some clothes and you have mm-hmm. some That's dishes like and stuff and it's just like the necessities to to that live. you need and maybe some decorations for your house but it's like it's the, the things that you want items, yeah you have to keep to a certain degree not like your own minimum because you don't want to go yeah. overboard with just buying things that you want it has to be something that you act that actually brings you joy for a period of time like if you just buy a shirt and wear it once and then it's like oh i don't like it anymore then that purchase wasn't really it didn't make you happy yeah it didn't make you happy it it wasn't a very good purchase or a very good choice on your end of of something that you actually want yeah to be in your life versus a a a clothing a piece of clothing like that you absolutely adore and you wear over and over and over again for like you look good in it or two or three years until it's like you can't wear it anymore because there's too many holes in it and Mm -hmm. you're like oh no i love that dress like i don't want to and then you have to say bye but then you have to throw it out like that's happiness because you enjoyed wearing it every day like so things can bring you happiness and that's the threshold where they should when your baseline needs are met with stuff whether that's like food shelter clothing um plus like those identifying valuable items that are important to you and i think that that all brings you happiness like when they talk about money and when it starts to peak you know when it's like around the seventy thousand annual salary like that's Mm -hmm. like peak happiness because all of your needs are being met plus a little bit extra fun to do with the money yeah and then after that it doesn't make you happier to have more money no. But, like, before that point, you can be unhappier because you don't have enough. You can't, like, go out so, and go bowling whenever you want. Or, right, right. You know, enjoy a movie mm-hmm. once in a while or, or dinner and not have when to worry about whether hustling. you can afford it. Yeah. Um, so, I think it, it's like that with money and it's like that with stuff. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't have anything, that's scary. But if you have too much, like, that's stressful. Yeah. So there's there's this medium ground where like stuff can bring you happiness. But then yeah, as you mentioned, like that line that you cross where no amount of stuff is ever gonna bring you enough more happiness. Yeah. Like that's just a baseline. You have your baseline needs met plus a little bit of breathing room and then that's it. Like that's where you're capped off with stuff at your happiness. Yeah, and that really gets into like like the base of like people who are hoarders Mm -hmm. of like their mindset is that nothing's ever going to be enough Mm -hmm. and like yeah and they just like hold on to things again because they don't think that they can afford it and maybe they can't but but they don't they don't wrap their head around the fact that they could afford something else or or you know give it up buy something newer or better um and so they just hold on to whatever it is whether it be newspapers or something that like just fills their space yeah yeah and makes them feel like they have 
a bunch of things because a lot of people think that things are going to make you happy they Mm -hmm. they make you full they make you seem like you have a lot of things and a lot of money it's like all you don't have the money anymore you've got stuff you (laughs) You don't have the money you have the stuff and so like Susie Orman's people first then money then things yeah don't because don't throw away your money for knickknacks but I think it comes back to so like last week I kind of mentioned that um at least with with people we don't like giving them up like we don't feel like we're losing something yeah with with people like we don't want to feel like we're losing someone and it's you the same always want to feel like you're gaining yeah as or at least like maintaining because mm-hmm. the feeling of loss is like humans are highly avoidant to loss we don't like that yeah which makes sense evolutionarily yeah yeah um but it's the same thing with stuff like we don't want to lose stuff but again the mentality that you want to bring to stuff is that you're gaining space you're you're gaining a sense of control you're gaining an opportunity for something that actually brings you happiness yes yeah and that's why the kind of the KonMari method when when she says like it's easier for people to say to let things go when they say thank you to it, when they're showing gratitude. Yeah. And we'll get to gratitude as the last rung of the ladder, but that kind of, like, brings it... You're able to say goodbye when you show gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's true happiness. Yeah. Is gratitude. So when you can say thank you for taking care of me or showing me that I didn't actually like this type of shirt or, you know, like, yeah, that's that different, I look like, terrible in this. Or whatever. Thank you. Like, thank you. For your purpose. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. And because then it it's is, easier to say goodbye and let that item go. It really is too, like, everything serves a purpose or in should. your life. Yeah. It should. Like, if you have a mug, even if you don't, use it or and it just sits there and you have to let it go like at one point you thought it was cute or you thought it looked nice and Mm -hmm. and it brought you happiness for a period of time but then it 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 fleeted it fled words are hard it was fleeting (laughs) it was fleeting and you then say thank you for the purpose that it had and and it brought you happiness at one point in life and and then you let it go and and that's a lot Mm -hmm. of things like you said it's it's the same thing with people at one point this person brought you happiness you say thank you and let it go it's the same thing with stuff you appreciate a water bottle and then if it breaks you have to say thank you and and it might have been your favorite and then you have to find something instead of throwing a broken water bottle in the corner and holding on to it forever because it because that happens it was that one water bottle that was the best water bottle ever and you could never find another one like it but you have like you might end up then finding something better that you didn't think but you kept the other one in a corner and and now you're never gonna let it go because yeah, you was, look at it and you're like oh it brought me these great memories and it I still was does sad i had to throw out a bunch of stuff because the mice got into it <laughs> And I was like, oh my goodness, like, I really loved a bunch of those things, but mice, mm-hmm. no good. So I had to throw out, like, a, a bag full of, like, kitchen items, and some some of which I'm like, well, I didn't really probably need this anyway, so I'm not going to replace it. And other things that I had to replace because they, like, an oven mitt. Yeah. Like, oh, really? They like to nest. <laughs> they like to steal things for their nests. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, it was hard to say like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna, ha- I just have to throw this stuff and out. You have to replace it. But then, but then I go to a conference and I won a water bottle. I'm like, this is a, this is a good water bottle. So, yeah, I had to throw out that water, the other water bottle. But like, now I have a new one. So it's like things change. Yeah. And that's a big thing. So I mentioned last week too that I was starting a meditation um where you can like let go of things and some of the med- the, the guided meditations were talking about how things change this too 
shall change like the the happy moments and the sad moments and so that if you can kind of like just roll with it it's easier so you know that like yeah it sucks sometimes to say goodbye to things or you have an urge to buy something in a store but this too shall pass like Mm -hmm. you don't need to binge buy anything and sometimes yeah you have to say goodbye but there will always be more things um or not and you get to control your space so but i'm happy with the water bottle that i have yeah and one day i'll have to get another one because who knows what will happen to the current water bottle you know and what you were saying like you don't have to binge shop or whatever Mm -hmm. um if you can't like something that I enjoy doing because I don't I don't purchase a lot of things myself personally um just because I I grew up again with a mountain of toys in my room <laughs> and so I don't feel the need I'm I'm very minimalistic in what I like I like high quality things and, mm-hmm. and the small things and I like things that things that look very clean things that I can keep clean and things that actually bring me joy and in my joy it's a clean home and a clean space yeah yeah that um, you can come home to and, and feel good and something that looks very like modern and sleek mine's high quality cheese yeah <laughs> i like to spend my money on a thing it's food i love food so so that's but very fleeting it also becomes but it tastes good <laughs> a problem because again with like the um our parents not having very much money early on in in their lives and then having to work up to a point. Mm -hmm. Um, Our dad enjoys buying clothes. Not, like, overly enjoys it. But but when he finds a nice quality shirt that looks nice, he's like, I need a new dress shirt. And and so he picks one up. Yeah, he's sustainable. Yeah. He's a sustainable shopper. He is a sustainable... (laughs) I can't <laughs> yeah. a sustainable shopper where like if he thinks he's like oh i need a new pair of pants he's gonna go out and find the best deal on a pair of pants but it's gonna be high quality and nice yeah, and cute. he's gonna wear it for a while um when you go out shopping with him he gets such cute clothes he does yeah. um our mom doesn't like clothes shopping which can be good and bad um in her case it's a lot of times bad because Mm -hmm. so many of her clothes that she just keeps wearing they either no longer fit her in a certain way that they did once before because of either weight gain or weight loss and then or it goes out of like style like things go out of fashion um that's why i try to by classic looking yeah. things that like never and, go out of style but and I, you know i enjoy that too you can have like a few fling pieces things. if you want yeah but yeah but she doesn't she doesn't she's not a sustainable shopper no which is really and then she ugh. just doesn't she like lets her good. clothes go to shreds before she buys new ones and then she's like oh i don't have anything to wear and then she has to go to the store and she dreads going at that point because Mm -hmm. she has to go um and it's not like an enjoyable experience like like i enjoy fun and exciting if you take a friend yeah for me i enjoy window shopping because a lot of times like i don't i don't need to fill my closet with a bunch of things which can be a problem actually you do i do that was gonna be my point (laughs) um but i enjoy i enjoy window shopping just because like the, like like we're talking about it might bring you happiness at, like when you see it but then if you were to buy it a week later it doesn't bring you happiness anymore so like just when yeah. you're shopping and looking at things and then maybe deciding Thinking over time it. it's like oh yeah. I might actually like that or like when you mm-hmm. window shop a couple times and you see the same item unless you times, love it and you're like oh if you go in I like that and you're like I love this thing mm-hmm. I say go ahead and and get it yeah lately i've been like it but if you're like i don't know i don't know is not love 
<laughs> Lately, I've been playing around with the idea of overalls and whether I could pull them off or not because I like them. They're super cute. Well, have you but I don't them know. On? No. <laughs> well, that would probably. I've been window shopping and I'm step. like mm, overalls. Well, I tried to try one pair on, but it wouldn't go up over my butt, so I gave up on that. Huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I saw them again at Walmart, and I'm like, mm, maybe overalls. You know, that's like that's fun. Um, try again. I might try again. <laughs> or if it's not. Because it's just like something that, you know, it's in the back of my head. It's like, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. But talking about specifically that I need clothes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> kind of desperately. Because I kind of let my jeans get to the point of no return before mm -hmm. I buy them. Mm -hmm. And I hold on to shirts for a long time. The thing is, I don't over hold on to shirts like if they're beyond whatever they don't fit or mm -hmm. I don't like the style anymore then I'll I'll pack them up and and donate them but lately especially since since surgery like I don't have a whole ton of wardrobe options that look as great I mean now you on, barely had them before your I didn't surgery have yeah. too because and, like, I was waiting for a while because yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get surgery and, and I'll have to get a new wardrobe. But the thing mm -hmm. is, now I, I, I'm I, where I am and I don't have a wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. I have a bunch of t-shirts, like, old theater t-shirts that then I wear them and then I put a sweatshirt on top. And then I wear, like, the sweatshirt. So I have a variety of sweatshirts that I can wear. But summer's coming up. Summer's coming up and You're I don't have very many cute A real things. cute dress right now? Mm -hmm. But there's, like... You only have like a couple it's true and like these i don't really like the style of because this is like kind of like it's like a baby doll style yeah dress i don't like the super float i like the oh. stuff that like comes in at the top and then like poofs out oh yeah at the I, waist i feel you yeah the like fit and flare or whatever you call it mm -hmm. um so i like those and so i should totally go to the yes. store and get some cute dresses i'll and, go with you and get if you want a buddy get some cute tops and it can make it easier yeah. And but then if like, you're not, like, sure, like, how do I look in this? Like, I'll be... But the problem I'll is... I'll be there for you. That in my head, in my roadblock, is, like, it costs money. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have a ton of money right now. Yeah. And our parents don't have a ton of money right now either. And so, like, mm -hmm. I can't overspend, like, although I would love it, yeah. to just go out and buy... Like, do your capsule wardrobe. Like, do it all at yeah. once. And, and I have a very simple, like, I hold on to my clothes for a long time. I know mm -hmm. that... I'm going to pick things that I'm going to enjoy yeah. for a long time, but I don't have, like, the money to just go out, which I would much rather prefer to just go out and get it all done in one thing right. and then, like, window shop and maybe get, you know, like, supplement things mm -hmm. every once in a while, kind of like how our dad... Yeah, like, maintenance. Like, yeah. you, you need but a I don't wardrobe even have to base. get to the point, yeah, <laughs> of maintenance. Um... Cause like me, I'm I'm kind of in between mom and dad. So like mom's just like hardcore, like doesn't want to go shopping and she yeah. hates it and she doesn't. Um, she d I don't know. She just doesn't get any happiness from clothing or anything like yeah. that. And then like dad is the kind of like, oh, he tries to find deals, but he like he's really good at maintenance and he has like a good base. Like yeah. I feel like I have a decent base of wardrobe. I did get rid of a lot of things that I wasn't wearing anymore, and I probably do need to supplement, like, a couple things, but I have a decent base. Um, I'm not very good at, like, actually going out and maintaining because of that frugality. I'm like, well, I don't really need to yeah. spend money. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter, but although I don't, like, particularly enjoy going out shopping, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited I'm going to go shopping. Like, sometimes I can be. Like, dress shopping, I'm like... Mm -hmm. I love dress shopping. Um, but other types of things, I'm like, oh, I have to, like, try it on and stuff like that. But I don't hate it. I'm just kind of apathetic to it, which is why it's, like, if you invite me to go out, like, hey, let's go shopping. I know that you need to pick up a new pair of pants or whatever. I'll be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll go do it. And it's fine. It's like getting a haircut. I'm like, I kind of enjoy it while I'm doing it. But until I get to that point, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I got to I gotta do that. I'm kind of... You know? That's the thing. I enjoy shopping. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it, but I just don't have the money. That's why I like to take you with it. me. Because you're, like, such a positive influence. 
Because I enjoy doing it, but then... And, like, if you see, like, a crazy <laughs> thing and you're like, oh, this is super cute, I'm like, you probably won't like it soon. It's too much money. Maybe choose a different item. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that, though. Not me. I'm a pretty boring shopper. I feel like there's been a couple times when you're like, is this cute? Like, is this worth it? And I didn't like, know because I didn't put it on my body. Yeah. But then I did, and I was like, oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> One, yeah. you did get me to buy those trash bag pants, but like I don't, I'm still not sure about them. Like yeah, they're, they're cute, so cute theoretically, but they kind of look bad on my butt. Like I don't know. I don't know. I think you're self conscious. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's just I don't know. Like there are different things that look different on different people, like better or worse. But yeah. At the end of the day, they're all things, sure. and you choose what you derive happiness from, so don't, like, overdo it. No. <laughs> don't have too many, because if you have too many clothes that you're not wearing everything, you're not rotating through everything, like, you don't need that thing anymore. You can only be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An extra pair of shoes is not going to make you happy. Whereas, again, the shoes are, like... I don't know about that. Not a good thing for me because, like, I definitely don't have enough shoes. Like, I'm, like, Mm. if I have, like, a pair of shoes per season, like, that's fine. But then it never is because I just wear those shoes over and over again. And then it destroys them. And then I have to go, like, shoe shopping again. So, technically... Mommy needs to go shoe shopping because she has one pair of shoes. Yeah. So She has athletic shoes and then she has one pair of shoes that she wears all the time. So, that's, like, the ultimate extreme. (laughs) But, like... Yeah, I'm I'm almost at that point where I'm like, it would be better if I had, like, a couple pairs of shoes per season so I can kind of rotate through them and not, like, wear them out. Like, I need athletic shoes because my sneakers yeah. are old. They're no good anymore. They're starting to hurt my feet when I run in them. Like, yeah. that's when you're like, I need to replace this item because I'm not getting, I'm not happy anymore because it's causing me pain. I guess I have a little bit. I, I, I care more about shoes than I do clothes maybe well I mean they hurt your feet or make your feet feel better or yeah. are cute or whatever like, I'm like high so, quality shoes are important I don't know they're just like they're kind of a make it or break it thing for the outfits for me mm-hmm. although I don't have that many but I I look at different styles of shoes and I'm like oh I wish I could have that and oh I wish like I have like mm-hmm. a pump and like a thigh high boot that I just finally purchased for like years and years. I wanted thigh high boots and I finally got some. They're not even that expensive, but it's just like I <laughs> that mental block of like, yeah, uh, it's like, do I need them? It's like they're cute as heck. Um, and then and then I have like a sandal heel yeah, yeah. that it's like that are on their last wear right now. And I used to get. I used to have several different kinds of vans, which I miss. I need a new pair of vans because I don't have any yeah, right now. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, but now my kind of go-to sneaker is, is athletic shoes, and so I have, like, three pairs of athletic shoes. But I wish mm. I had more that were, like, more versatile. Because, like, right now I just wear my black pair, which is a pair that I really, really like, but I don't want them to be worn every single day. Oh, yeah. Those are really cute. I could see where you wouldn't want to, like, yeah. get them... That's messed up. But, okay, so you're better than me with shoes. With shoes. Because I... But I feel like that's also my problem. Like, if I had unlimited money, I'd buy you all the shoes. be a shoe... Yeah. A shoe it's not, diva. It's not a bunch of purses. It's not, like, a super crazy wardrobe. It's, like, shoes. You know? Because, like, that's the one thing that I like to mix up. I could wear a black and white and gray wardrobe, could wear total neutrals, and then have, like, a red pair of shoes yeah, or that's something. Your and, like, my shoes are my accent. Yeah. Whereas, like, I'm definitely just, I, I like my shoes to be neutral, like, black flats and mm-hmm. neutral sandals and stuff like that, and neutral, like, black heels and that, that kind of thing. And then I switch up my wardrobe for colors. So we're kind of rolling opposites on that but <laughs> no yeah so it the, varies the point, your things vary i guess the point again is that 
baseline happiness can be derived from things but then at a certain point like there's no more happiness that you can get out of stuff and if i had like a a room full of shoes it might be stressful (laughs) yeah because are you gonna wear am i gonna wear them all and then you have to make a decision and all the choices you have the the paradox of choice. choices are stressful (laughs) they are actually and uh, you know the studies prove that like if you have too many choices like you get analysis paralysis and like you can't make a choice and it's very anxiety inducing so too much stuff is create is like stressful like Mm -hmm. you said previously too little stuff can also be stressful yeah moderation but then when you're capped out with stuff and happiness your next rung of the ladder is experiences you know that old adage is like stuff can't buy you happiness but experience can well kind of and we'll talk about that next week about how experience can make you happy and and why it is also again only the second rung of the ladder and there are five rungs so obviously experience is not the be all end all there is more after that but that's what we will be talking about next week how experiences can or may not make us happy If you like what we're doing here, please consider becoming a supporter of the show. The Fireside Chat podcast is part of a new entertainment hub called The Fox Hollow. We have shows about money, gaming, music, legal comedy, and more on YouTube. And we post new Fireside Chat episodes every Monday. If you'd like to ask a question or submit a public comment to be shared on the podcast, please email us at thefoxhollowhub at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please become a patron by donating at patreon.com slash the fox hollow linked in the description below you can follow us on instagram at the fox white tea and if you like what you hear please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss another podcast or video so we talked a little bit about money and if you're interested in investing you should check out robin hood Robinhood is an online investing app and they give the power back to the people by not charging fees or commissions when you go to buy and sell stocks. Use this referral code to get started. Share.robinhood.com slash S-C-H-E-Y-L-G-7 and you'll receive one free share of a random stock and you have the chance to win some big name investments like Apple and Berkshire Hathaway. Sure to make you happy. By using this referral code, both you, the listener, and myself will receive a random share of stock. This is a great way to give back to the show while also getting a gift in return. We post new podcasts every Monday and new videos every Friday. Thank you so much for listening and see you next week. Bye. Bye.